So we are going over lambda calculus. So we have some questions and we're talking about how to parse um, these lambda calculus expressions. So it really goes back to the disambiguation rules. So these are something that you have to study and then you have to look at and do the transformations and do the disambiguations until you don't feel like you have to do them anymore, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, and you can use all the examples that we have in the slides and examples you find online. So there's two core core things, two core ambig uh, disambiguation rules. When we see A, B, C, D, whatever, E, a series of applications, just like when we have maybe, well, with, uh, if we have A plus B plus C plus D, plus E, right? We can have arbitrary mathematical operations, but we need to know what happens first, right? I mean, the computer has to execute something. So one way to solve that is you just say, what happens first? So, and that's left associativity. So that would be here, we'd say, we first do A plus B. The result of that, we're gonna add to C. The result of that, we're gonna add to D. And then finally, the result of that, we add to E. Right, so that's just left associati associativity. That's the general what that is. It's just one strategy of disambiguation, but that is the strategy we are using for when we have an what would look like an ambiguous sequence of applications. So now when we disambiguate this, what this means is, right, because there's multiple ways we could parse this, well, this A and B application is gonna happen first. And then the result of that, C will be applied to the results of that. And then the results of that will be applied to D. And the results of that will be applied to E. Actually, that's kinda cool. Right, and so this way there's no ambiguity. We know this happens first, and the result of that is applied to that. The result of that is applied to this. The result of that is applied to that. That's just something you gotta, you gotta get in your bones. Practice. Exactly. Cool. So, for instance, in this example, we have an instance of this. Where is it? Well, the, the first one would that be A and B, right? Yes. So we have here, we have A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. We have applications here. So we know from this rule that if we wanted to add parentheses to disambiguate this, we would first apply B to A and then apply the result of that to C. So that's how we would parse that. Okay. Now, the next thing that's ambiguous is So, we have this lambda x dot x y. Does this mean lambda x dot x and y? So we have an application of y to lambda x dot x, or does it mean lambda x dot x y, where x y is the body of this abstraction? Would it have to be that? It has to be the, the last one. Well, it is going to be based on our rules, right? But this is kind of an arbitrary thing. We have defined it that yes, whenever we see this, you can think of this dot extends all the way as far as possible, and we put parentheses around there. Okay. Now, the tricky thing is, if we look at an example like this, we have lambda x dot x applied to y, right? If we're trying to extend the dot as far as possible, well, we can't extend it outside of this parentheses, because this parentheses forces us to parse this as one unit, mm -hmm. right? So we can't say that, well, this is actually the body of this abstraction, because that doesn't make sense. We can't force it to go outside of there. So, you know, this is already not ambiguous, but we would add parentheses around there. because so we're saying this is the body of this abstraction. But if it was laid out like that in that case, that would be just be basically saying that you take y into the value, you replace the x with y? Yes, yes. That's when we're getting the computation. But um, the first step of that is really being able to disambiguate these things. Because on an exam or on homework or anything, if you don't understand the, w if you don't parse lambda expression the same way that we're parsing in class, you're going to have problems, or even if you do it correctly, but the result that you write is not 
correct based on our disambiguation rules, and that's not right. Um, so you want to save yourself from that. So now we have this case where we have A, B, C, right? But we have three function applications, right? And so here we'd say, okay, by this rule, this the body of this abstraction is going to extend as far as it can, and the body of this abstraction is going to extend as far as it can. And the body of this abstraction is going to extend as far as it can. And that would be our disambiguation rules. Okay. Six, seven, eight, one, two, two. Okay, because what I did was I put the parentheses around the A. Is that not correct? Around here? At, at the, at, bef after, here? Before the lambda. So. Oh, around this whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, that's fine. That doesn't it doesn't really change or hurt anything. It can be that would be super important if there was something out here, right? If there's something out here, yeah. this means you're applying ten to this, which means you're going to end up replacing a in here with ten. But this means that this is part of that body, this a b c. So this ten should be there, right? So this means this body goes all the way out to here. Actually, it wouldn't be part of there. It would be part of here, right? So this body would be here. Because this, so this would try to extend as far as it can. It would only be able to get, I can't count all the things, but if we redid this, it would go only so far, right? This would get stopped, this would get stopped. But we go to here, this goes all the way, and so this is the body of A, this lambda A. So I just want to be clear, so with it, the lambda C, as far as it can go, is the last frequency by that C, right? Yes. And then the B go, can go all the way to the that the lambda C parentheses we just set up. Yes. And then the same thing with A. Because we have these yeah. these in place. I got you. If we got rid of all of these, they would all extend. This would extend all the way over. I got you. Right. So if we had lambda A dot lambda B dot lambda C dot A B C ten, mm -hmm. right? This would go here. This would go here. This would go here. And this whole thing is the body, right? And we got boom, boom, boom. I got you. So it just depends on how it's how it's set up. Yes. So if we have the disambiguous, we have to do the best we can if it looks something like that. Yes. Nice. I see. It's just practice. I think that's the main thing is practicing this thing yeah. so you get familiar with it. Cool. Let me kill this. <laughs>